What's up? All right, so I got word that the parts I ordered for the intake hoses and stuff, I wanted to replace this hose here. Just because it, it's not leaking, but it does have signs of cracking. Let's see if we can get this. <laughs> right in the armpit of this thing is like, it's showing signs of cracking and wearing out. It wasn't leaking air though. The smoke never came out of it. Um, but just because I saw that, I was trying to order that and it's been a month now since I ordered it. And, and I also noticed that this thing that supports the intake on the back, one of them was missing and so I ordered new ones, but apparently it's getting like lost in translation somewhere and I'm not able to get them right now for some strange reason. Who knows? Anyways, um, took this off, cleaned the IAC valve. It was beautiful to start inside and out. It flops around. It's super clean inside. It looked like that when I took it off. There's no carbon whatsoever in this thing. I don't know how I can get you guys the light, right light for this, but you can tell. So what I did was just, you know, these are, they're not completely hard, but they are getting a little hard. There's, you know, you can see like the clamp is starting to show signs that it's just hardening up so I just soaked them in 303 to long give them a little bit longer life until um, the other parts come in and who knows I mean I probably will just add them to the list of extras on the car and let whoever else change it down the road if they need to it's not hard to do this this intake plenum is super easy to take off it's not hard at all very basic um, what I did with this bumper you can see it's um, it's basically this with a piece of rubber between it and then another one on top that's what this is and these things all separated from the rubber so I just took some two-part epoxy DP 100 is what I use you can use whatever two-part epoxy and just glue them back. I just stuck it in the vise like this and held it there, you know, to just to give it some support. Anyways, I'm going to put this back the way it is because I need to get this car running and I need to be able to move it around. Um, I got to get the M5 in the garage. It's, it's hanging out outside, it's collecting a ton of dirt and dust and then my uh, truck doesn't have a parking spot because of it so um yeah i'm i was i cleaned a trumpet and while they don't look dirty so this is a dirty one you can't really tell it's dirty <laughs> but i will show you it's dirty because i cleaned these and even though they don't look any much cleaner I'll show you. I decided I should film this, take you along for the ride, show you the full spectrum of what I'm doing to this thing for whoever is going to own this car, just for my journalism on my journey of this car and potentially selling it to the next owner. You know, so I just want to keep all this stuff kind of documented and show what I've done. So let's go. I clean these three. These three. Let's go clean these three. I'll show you. Welcome to my sink. Trumpet. Looks pretty shiny. On the bands, I kind of polished them a little bit because they did have a little surface rust and just dull looking. So but watch. Looks clean and it is clean for the most part. Um, 
I ran just a shirt or a cloth through here this way and that like fully made this super smooth and nice inside. You see how this is like flared? That's like speaker action right there, speaker port action, reduced turbulence. Watch how much stuff comes off of this and it doesn't look like it would, but. <coughs> Oil eater, basic, but it works good. So these are all the crispy, not really crispy, they're not too bad, but they are triangled out from being on that intake for so long. I don't know if you can see that, but. So I got the bag of red silicone that I'm gonna put on it. So next step, I'm gonna just soak these guys in 303 and hopefully I long, prolong their life, you know, especially this rubber boot right here. You don't want that to break that thing. I don't know what it costs. I haven't even looked, but I, it's probably not cheap. Then again, I'm, I'm kind of wildly surprised at how much things actually cost for this engine. And they're not expensive. They're just hard to, not really hard to source. You can source them, but it just takes a long time to get. So that's, that's the only downfall of having the Euro engine. So let's um, start putting this stuff back together. And if I get the parts in the middle of this, I mean, this won't, this will take me a few hours. I'm not gonna get parts in the middle of this. <laughs> uh, if the parts come in the next few days or whatever, I'll, I'll take it apart and do it all the right way. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's put this thing back together and get it running. Shoots. Yeah, let's put this thing back together. All right. All right. I don't remember how it goes, but all right. Need some light.
Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I am such a rookie at this YouTube thing. Thought my thing was recording, it wasn't. But it was kind of just a boring episode of me assembling these trumpets back on. I cleaned them up, um, shot them with the 303 Aerospace Action to try and prolong the these rubber boots a little bit. Oh, man. Skeezer. This is mean. This whole trumpet system is so mean. Oh, I love it. Okay, I'm going to try to put this back on. Um, yeah, I got my one thing right here to hold it, which should be okay for now. Um, I'm going to get more in eventually. Let's put it on the one that's easy to get to. Inside's all nice and clean. The inside of the trumpets are all nice and clean. They weren't even that dirty, believe it or not. I was impressed. But yeah, let's try to get this thing back on. Not try it, but let's do it. Just do it, brah. Let's see, how do I hold this open? Yeah, the back sides of the plates are pretty dirty. Um, not pretty dirty, but dirty. And down inside look like they could use a little maintenance. Nothing crazy though. I guess I'll just stick a screwdriver handle in there and move it as I need to.
Let's go. Whoa, whoa. Clean, cuz. Clean, ba. Joe Coy action for you right there. Okay, let's clear the area. Coming in hot with the manifold. Boom. In. Okay. Gonna put the nuts back on this. These trumpets. <laughs> Once again, forgot to record. Uh, you guys don't need to see me putting nuts on a whatever, but I did the old paper and the socket trick to hold this nut in. Cause I'm all the way back here. Let's see if I can do it without dropping, dropping my nut. Might not be able to. Might need a universal. I can't remember what, what I use to take it off. <laughs> Just slide into these DMs over here. Ah, oh. okay, I think it hit the ground. Yeah, it hit the ground. Okay, the paper didn't work. I need to try something thicker. Maybe double amount of paper uh, you know what it just kind of cuts it so I don't know if it'll even hold with double the amount of paper just gonna have to guide it in like cougar guided got guided by Pete Mitchell Maverick Oh yeah, I'm doing this all blind, not blind, not, I didn't smoke nothing, blind meaning can't see nothing back there, but it's on, easy. I don't have TIS, but there's nothing that says park value on this, so I'm just going to snug it up. No park values listed. 10 millimeter 
head nuts, which are, I don't know, eight millimeter bolts, usually around the 20 Newton meter mark. The good thing about these flanges is that there's a, a metal bushing in there, so you can't crack flange from over tightening it. Right. That didn't take as long as I expected. Um, yep, back together. Check my coolant real quick. Yeah, still got coolant in there. I plan on mounting that thing one day. Soon, hopefully. Oi! As soon as I get all this put back together, what happens? All the parts I was waiting for for over a month show up in the mail. <laughs> the two bumpers, uh, the two mounting bumpers for the plenum. New hoses under the plenum. Just these three parts of oh, five, five parts. Ah, well, let's get this thing taken apart again real quick. Put these new stuff, these new stuffs on, and then uh, we'll go for another drive. The audio on the last drive video I took completely got washed out by the wind, so I need to figure out where a better spot for my mic is. Um, yeah, let's get to it. This one has like an arrow on it. I don't know what's up with that. Oh, this one has an arrow too. Check that out. Arrow. This one's got like a molded arrow. These are all BMW parts. Your classic 13411401660, okay? Don't forget it if you need one. Europe.
silicone dielectric grease actually is what I've been using DC4 dielectric grease Okay, I realized I wasn't filming half of that install, but it's not like you guys <laughs> could see anything anyway, but I can get my phone under here to show you all the, try to show you what goes on under here. You can see the tubes, the tube, new rubber mount, so that's solid again. <coughs> Um, by the way, this thing right here is plugged in, but the vacuum lines are plugged. So that's for the secondary air injection that didn't come on this car. I mean, it's still part of the car's systems, but it's not, um, well, it tries to activate it in the, in the beginning and then nothing really happens. and. So it doesn't fault any codes for it because it's still plugged in. The valve is still plugged in, so it thinks it's working, but it it doesn't. I took all the vacuum lines off because those are brittle and leaking. So I don't know if this helps show you guys anything real significant, but I'm going to put the boot on and put the smoke machine and make sure all my re repairs, not re well, I mean, it's kind of repair, but or what I did doesn't leak. That's the main thing. So uh, I need two hands to do that. Get this back on. I'll put the smoke machine on and take you guys for a a ride in the smoke. Okay, got the smoke machine connected. Um, <clears throat> this is the Auto Line Pro. Auto Line Pro. Auto Line something. Auto line pro. <laughs> it's got quite a it's not got quite I mean it's got positive and negative, it's got this thing, it's got the pump, so it's self-contained in a sense, like it's all in one. What's funny is I bought this because I watched the the day off DIY guy and he's using this and I looked it up and it was a super reasonable price. I mean anyone you guys know that these smoke machines um are costly from OTC and even Mac and Snap-on. They're ridiculously priced, and so this one was really affordable in my opinion. It's like you know, it's really good. This this thing, twenty bucks. This thing, I forget, like hundred twenty bucks or something. What's funny is I bought this based on his recommendation, and then right after I get mine, he comes out with that that self-contained battery powered one that's like super nice. I'm like, damn, I would have bought that. Oh, frick. So whatever. I'm so glad I have this thing because it makes it makes finding your problems and and verifying your repairs super easy. Oh, instead of wondering if it worked or not. But here, I'll turn it on. Let's, let's get this thing pumping. Mm. 
I can't smoke in a rating. That's good. Plug it in. You know, we're pressurizing the bellows. I mean the intake system. Get my flashlight. Turn the fans off. You need still air for time leaks, so can't have no fans on. Let me open the intake. Get the air up in the intake. Even though it's going up in there, it's probably through the idle air control valve, but this will just help. So I used to have a lot of smoke coming out of this number four flange and the number six in the back. Put the three mil silicone, red silicone o-rings on there and it did the job. I tried the two mil and it wasn't enough. I don't see smoke. Anywhere. Take this thing off again. Oh yeah. This thing's loaded with smoke. <coughs> okay. You can see it's good. There's a ton of pressure in there. And that stuff stinks, man. My hand's like oily from that just that smoke alone. All right, come back. All right. That didn't take as long as I expected. Um, yep, back together. Check my coolant real quick. Yeah, still got coolant in there. I plan on mounting that thing one day. Soon, hopefully. Okay. Got my scanner, <clears throat> USB VCI contraption connected to the 20 pin, 21 pin, using the top Dawn Phoenix Light too. This tells me enough about this car, I think. It seems like it tells me more than Impa does for some reason. Then again, I don't know if Impa is working 100% for me, but. Let's get in here. You guys never heard this thing run yet. This will be your first time. Any exhaust leaks? Oh, bruh. She's purring. Just turn the top down. So Don Juan, she runs smoother. You want to hear the intake? I'm gonna miss this thing, huh? Actually, the sound of that six cylinder. anything yet going to the beam dub I'll show you guys this uh, okay let's um, menu select three series 36 drive ECM DME DD not DD not diesel the DME it 
it still has a slight miss. Might be able to pick that up on camera. Okay, just giving you the info of that, which I don't really know what it's for. Read fault code. Control module fault, fault memory master. Maybe because I uh, unplugged that cap while it was running. I lied, I started it up right before my camera wasn't on, so I turned it off and redid it for you guys. I didn't lie, but 9B, we'll just clear that because I think I induced it. Read it again, no fault code. Okay, special function, clear adaptations, yes. Turn engine off. So you have the option here, clear oxygen sensor adaptation, clear clutch adaptation, clear throttle valve potential potentiometer adaptation, clear idle air adaptation, clear all adaptations. So let's just do all of them. That's number five, get number five here. All values were clear, okay. So that's, that's that. You can do a Vanos test and a EWS DME alignment. If you swap your computers, you swap an engine, the EWS, the NFF system needs to know that that is the, that's the right computer for the car and someone's not trying to just hijack you. So let's just go read some fault codes again. No fault codes. Okay. Let's get back into, not back into the data stream here. Um, additive correction, seal corrections are, they're set in the computer apparently from the factory that this engine, so when the engine was made, they set auto CO corrective, um, or the carbon dioxide corrections. So I'll just show you this. You'll see that they're all different. One, 92, two, negative 77, three, 221-405060. So there must be something on bank one that causes a little weirdness in the CO values. They measure that out of the exhaust. So there's exhaust ports on each uh, header pipe coming right out of the cylinder head. And they'll do that at the factory, supposedly. So... Um, So multiplicative, I believe, is interpreted somewhat like long-term fill trim. Uh, let's go oxygen sensor on one and three, one to three on bank one, and an oxygen so oxygen sensor for bank two. Um, don't really. If we're trying to figure out what the miss is right now, I'm just going to start with that and see. Um, we can do this. Camshaft. Exhaust. Actual and nominal. Intake actual and nominal. Right, so. They're all separated. Actual exhaust, and you gotta skip one zero, right? So let's fire this thing up and see if we get any indications that look suspicious or that the computer fault come back.
Great, so. Intake, we're asking for 60 degrees. Camshaft actual is 61. It's really close. Um, camshaft exhaust is asking for zero. We're at one and a half or so. Let's give us a couple blips. I'm not sure what the tolerance is and what would really affect it, but so you can see our multiplicative is going negative. So that's a good sign. I mean, it's negative 0 0.01, but I believe it was a positive before. Our oxygen sensors are cycling. So that's a good sign that they're working. Bank to oxygen sensor. These could probably be changed. Honestly, I don't think they've ever been changed. So you know what we need to try and look for is short term, which is additive. Make sure adaptation. So let's just get rid of these things for now. So, computer said it's not adding any <laughs> on bank one. I'm not adding any on bank two, so. But you can still hear there's a, a miss at idle. Could be a simple vacuum leak somewhere, but I did smoke the intake and it pumped so much smoke and pressure into the intake, enough to blow my, my bladder out of the intake where the map sits, so. And I didn't see any smoke. I might try it one more time, but let's get this thing warmed up, get that exhaust stuff melted before I start, you know, adding a lot of throttle into this. hear that then again this car hasn't run for oh, some time now so might just need a good rev up tune up Try with the AC on. Still a little under load. Not as much though. Seems like without the load it it misses more. Let's see if we got any adaptation values going. Nothing changing on the adaptation. Not adaptation. Well, yeah, it's mixture adaptation. Air conditioning system active. What's our airflow? Mass airflow saying. See, I don't know. Is 25, 24 too high at idle? 
Let's turn the AC off and see. 24 kilograms an hour. Is that what that means? Oh, AC's cold. Okay, unloaded. Oh, there, I dropped on the 20, 19. Um, another thing we could look at is GPS. And there's this thing uh, says, uh, what does it say? Number of faded out cylinders. I don't know what that means, but let's see. So the throttle position sensor is 300. As I blip the throttle, let's watch the graph. I don't see any hiccups in those blips. So I think, um, if anything, so I did have this Vanos overhaul by Dr. Vanos, and um, that was, you know, it, what it hasn't gotten in a lot of miles since I actually did that overhaul in, in retrospect it's been a long time but it, you know it hasn't had a lot of miles put on it since so um, I know o-rings they you know the oil can make them brittle and all that so maybe that camshaft sensor camshaft sensor the actual position of the camshafts or You know, maybe this is a big deal. 1.2 degrees off, 1.1 degree off. It could be this throttle position sensor. I don't know. This thing is changing a little bit. 290, 300. Is that what it's supposed to be at at idle? I don't know. I don't know what a known good value is. The camshafts look like they, they do pretty well under the higher engine speeds, which is good. They are reacting. They are um, following the command. And I don't hear the exhaust leak. So I think we're good on the exhaust. I want to give this thing a little bath and maybe go for a drive around the block. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I haven't driven this car in so long. We're up to full temp now. Freaking glorious. It's smooth. I mean, I don't know how much smoother it can get or it should be. 
but I'm not gonna make a huge stink about it. Car is covered in dust and dirt, so I'm gonna I'm gonna rinse it off with some deionized water. Need to put some some coolant in here. Some BMW blue coolant, but it's not BMW, it's peak blue or European BMW is right there. Okay, BMW all. Oh, it's all good. Do my best around here. And this is concentrated, so obviously I'm not gonna. I'm not going to just fill up the reservoir with this stuff. But what I will do is pour a little bit in and then pour some deionized water in afterwards. Nothing freezes here, obviously, but it will boil. So this is still a good thing to do regardless. Yeah, quite a bit drained out when I um, took those took the radiator hoses off and there changed that fan just to clean it up a little bit you know. Okay, quick perimeter check. Let's check the oil real quick. I think she could probably use an oil change. Um, <laughs> can't really tell. Would help if this thing wasn't dark brown. Which it probably wasn't to start, but it's full. And the oil is a little, eh, it's not black or crazy looking. Main thing is it's full. Oh, forgot how these are new struts, so they're they fight. Dude, this freaking giraffe pressure washer is ridiculously stupid loud. I hate it. I can't wait for this thing to break so I can just buy a not different one. Buy an active 2.0. Should have just did that to start. <laughs> Let's go get my wallet and go for a ride Rent so this water can blow off. <laughs> Good thing about the ionized water, I don't have to worry about it spotting. It's like one of the best things ever. Okay, do it.
Okay, this should be fun. Let's go. Oh yeah, it's the first time I'm driving it since I since I installed the since I installed the clutch pedal and the bushings and fixed and the master cylinder and fixed that clicking. That was the worst, man. I can't believe I drove around like that for this whole time and just decided to fix it right before I went to sell the car. Stupid. So I guess driving it like this uh, after clearing adaptations and stuff will help the computer relearn engine parameters and all that. Let's buckle up. I get my trash cans off the road. Oh man. This thing feels like a different car. down this way to start. This thing pulls, man, for its age. Originally, it's supposed to have a six speed, which is, you know, a lot shorter gearing which helps the low end torque because this is a high revving engine technically spot an E34 525 You can just hear this thing breathe when you open it up. It's crazy. This engine is so much more animal than the factory S52. Taking a drive through Eva Beach. <laughs> Trying not to get busted by cops. Because you can get in trouble with this car. Wow, it's been a 
a while since I've done that. Spun the tires in first. Didn't even hit the red line where all the power is made. Okay. Let's get my heart going. I don't care about the idle, the misfire idle. This car is some balls, man. A mistake when you sell it. The police. Driveway has a bunch of the thing sticks on the handbrake. Woo. Check coolant level. Okay. Will do. Well, hello. You performed quite well. Yeah, I think there's just air in the system. Expansion takes not mounted, but you know that was my next project. I bought the brackets. I just got to rivet them on, pop through it. But okay, so next one will just be a a full wash. It does. Um, I'm not gonna polish it. It had enough polishing in its life, and I barely touched this car since I polished it last. So. Um, I think I'll just, unless I can figure out what else I want to do to this thing before I let it go. Yeah, maybe I'll take you guys on the ride for that coolant tank mounting. My, uh, wiper cowl, it had a little bulge right here and it still kind of does. I don't know why it won't sit flat, but I was hoping, maybe I should leave it in the sun and let it, um, Loosen up a little. Not today though. I don't feel like it. I gotta go back to work soon. But I'd say the exhaust leak is fixed. Okay. Until I can figure out what else we wanna do. Shoots!